Good evening everyone. Tonight's the 25th of April. It's Tuesday evening. And Mark has kind of let me down. I had him started reading through this Poems for Edification volumes. It's now volumes 1 through 5. And he's kind of let me down, so I'm going to read some of them tonight. And if any of you would like this book, I'd be ha happy to send it to you. Just send me an email. How you can go to my email is go to the link LarryWPhillips.com and go to the contact section and just go and say send me your book and I'll send you this Poems for Edification book. Usually when you request one of my books, I send all five of them. They're all PDF and in PDF format. I'm going to read tonight page 10 through maybe 20 depending on how long it takes me. Um, I wrote these books mainly when I was woken up in the middle of the night with my arthritis. These poems would be in my head and I'd write these poems down. I hope they're a blessing. The first one is entitled My Petition. Dear Lord, the reins of my heart are in your hands. When troubled waters are before me, my enemies obey your command. Who can in thy holy presence stand? But those whom thou hast delivered with your mighty hand, and chose them in Christ before the world began. My hope rests in your finished work and in your Son, who gave his life a ransom for many, to rescue their souls from death for eternity. What a delight as I trust in your grace and mercy to think that you have chosen me to raise me from death to life and set my soul in Christ at liberty. When I come to stand before your holy throne, may I trust in Christ and Christ alone. and abide with you forever, for your blood for me atones. Next one is entitled, The Trials of God's Elect. Have you ever had a trial so big and difficult that it felt like you it was a personal assault? And you could find no relief it was pressing in so hard that you were considering just throwing in the cards. The trial had gone on with no relief. It was as if you'd been fried in a skillet of hot grease. If the burner was turned down, you might endure, but instead it was getting hotter and hotter for sure. What is the answer to this bitter fate? Should we get all angry and be filled with rage and hate? Or should we escape into an isolated cocoon and stay there at morning, evening, and noon? The answer is to go to the rock. He always cares for his precious flock. His name is Jesus Christ, the living Son of God. The only answer is in this veil of tears we trod. He is the hope for us when we are weary, teary, and blue. He cares. He understands. He'll make a way for you. He knows his people's hearts, their strains and tribulations. That's why he's given us eternal salvation. So when we get so low, our faith seems to be shaking. We to our Lord should all our problems be taking. He will sustain us and hold us up, for he is drunk from the most bitter cup, the cup of God's wrath poured out upon him when he was without even one sin. He bore our sins upon the cruel tree so that we would live with him eternally. The next one is entitled, God's Love. When I think of God's love and what he did for me by dying on the cross unconditionally, I'm sometimes overwhelmed in my mind and in my soul why this precious Savior would even care. To give himself on Calvary for my life to spare. He could have done about doing other things like watching the angels or listening to them sing. But to come to this sun-cursed earth, and to die for me is the greatest expression of love that I will ever see. 
How can I thank you, Lord, for being oh so kind to realize that before creation you had this worm in mind? To come and shed your blood and endure such scorn and pain should cause me to give you praise in an eternal refrain. Help me demonstrate in some real way this grace and love to others is my prayer today. So many times I forget what an awesome thing you did for me when you died and rose again to set my soul at liberty. Thank you. Well, the next one is entitled, What Are Friends For? Because you and I may be friends, shouldn't that be where the honesty begins? Or should I change my doctrine to suit your cup of tea, and you change yours so that it suits me? I think not, my friend. Let's tell the truth. And if it's offensive or considered uncouth, then give me your side of the picture as well, and you might change my mind if the Word of God tells. But don't think I'm going to change my doctrine for you just because we are friends. To my own conscience, I must be true. But you might say, Larry, nobody agrees with you. Well, Noah survived the flood and his neighbors drowned in the blue. The next was in his title, Loneliness. Loneliness. Have you ever been so lonely and bored out of your mind it seemed that life was meaningless if you could only find someone to talk to, something to do? Life was getting blasé and really old, too. Each day you awake with another day of gray if there was just someone to talk to, something new today. But it's the same old them and the same old you. Now you realize why this song was written, Love is Blue. Then all of a sudden you hear a flutter in the trees. A squirrel has found a walnut kicking in the breeze. Next you hear a robin singing on the lawn and a puppy barking and see a baby fawn. You then hear a baby cackling and a child laughing too. Then you realize life's not so boring around you. Wake up and smell the coffee. God has created all things. If you stop and look around you, all of earth his praises sing. From now on, don't be so sad and gray. Don't be ever so blue. Thank your Heavenly Father for making all things new. Well, the last one I'm going to do today is Creation is a Wonder of Your Might. When I awake at early dawn and the sunlight glimmers on my face, Father, I then know that creation is a wonder of your might. When my heart feels the comfort of your spirit wooing, I want to thank you for your amazing grace. When the flowers bend their heads waving to me at sunrise, Father, then I know that creation is a wonder of your might. When I remember resurrection morning, your sun rising from the dead, I want to thank you for your glory fills the skies. When I see the robin, the redbird, and the dove waking to a new day, Father, I then know that creation is a wonder of your might. Knowing that Christ is seated at your right hand, I know someday I to paradise will take my flight. When the squirrels rise early playing in the trees, Father, I know that creation is a wonder of your might. I then know that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And thank you again for your love shown on Calvary. When I see and hear the waters of a creek on the mountainside, Father, I then know that creation is a wonder of your might. And the water and the blood that flowed from your riven side reminds me to be so thankful for the day for me you died. And in the early evening, when the sun begins to set, Father, I then know that creation is a wonder of your might. As the cool breeze blows and the robin returns unto her nest, the rest I have in Christ, your perfect sacrifice, was met. When I see the fawn by the road peering through the trees, Father, I then know that creation is a wonder of your might. And I see her mother not far away, once again the great shepherd beckons me to my knees. When this old world with all its sin is burned up and destroyed, Father, I will then know that creation is a wonder of your might. As a new Jerusalem descends from heaven with wonder and delight, I want to thank you for fulfilling Christ's promise and I'll be overjoyed. What marvels await for me in this new city, I am told. Father, I will then know that creation is a wonder of your might. I'll live in a city where I'll never grow old and I'll forever thank you for the sweetest story ever told. Well, may the good Lord be with you this evening, and I'm going to continue to read through this book until I get through it. I've read it through it before, but I'm going to read through it again unless I can get Mark to read. Continue to read through it. May you have a good night tonight. God bless.